Good morning, everyone, and welcome to church on a beautiful Halloween day morning. We're so glad you're here, or virtually, wherever you may be. We're going to start right now by singing our opening chant, One with the One. delighted that you have joined us in person or via Facebook Live or Zoom. And for those who are here in person, please be sure to silence your cell phones. Thank you. And so now join me in prayer. I recognize that there is only one life, one infinite presence. It is love. It is intelligence. It is all that there is, and it is in me and all around me, and that is so for each and every being and each and every person here joining us on, in our church service today. That one life, that one life inspires all that we have today in our church service. It uplifts us by means of all the people who are providing service to us. We have unsung heroes here who make this church service happen. That one life absolutely flows through our musicians and our soloists today. I know that it is good and really inspirational. And most especially that one life, that one presence, that one intelligence flows through Dr. Mark as he speaks to us today, the perfect message for each and every one of us. I know that that message and all that transpires in this service allows us to have that perfect foundation of faith. And that faith increases our mental awareness of the good that's possible in our lives. And so I know we are truly blessed by all that this entails, all of that provides us, and that each and every one of us being here is a blessing to the other. I am truly grateful for this time, for this church service, for our beloved Dr. Mark who speaks to us with eloquence, with grace, with the perfect word. And so I let it be so. I release this word into the law of mine, knowing it is already done, and so it is. And together we can say, Amen. Amen.
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the glory and the glory forever. Amen. Please remain standing for our congregational song, which is Make a Joyful Noise. Make a joyful noise. Lift your voices to the sky. Make a joyful noise to your source and your supply. Celebrate as one, grateful for this time we share. Celebrate as one, unified as we declare. God is love, God is peace, God is joy, God is unity, God is good. I'm supposed to say, please be seated, but you're already doing that. <laughs> We're going to meditate now. Uh, for the next five minutes, I invite you to close your eyes and silently repeat the mantra, God's the love that I am. If your mind wanders, just bring it back to silently repeating, God's the love that I am, and I'll bring us out of the meditation in five minutes.
There is an order, a rhythm, a purpose deep in our lives. I'm learning to love from the place where I came beyond any time. I am alive in you. Always been a child of wonder. What I'm looking for, I'm looking with now. I understand. I need only reveal more and more of myself. Oh, as it is plain. Welcome. It's good to have you here. If you're with us in person, Facebook, Zoom, however you're here, if you're just a walk-in, we're glad you're here. It's wonderful. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit today uh, about this idea of fate and destiny and karma and how we participate with that. So um, people will often say something like, gee, I, I, this must be my fate. This must be my destiny. And you know, I've got to tell you when I hear that, what I hear is, I give up. Yeah, because Ernest Holmes says karma is not kismet. Your destiny is not sealed in cement in any way. That people say, well, this must be God's will for me. Well, I want to correct this right now. And because God's will is always for greater peace, greater love, greater joy, and does not harm anyone. This is what it says in our textbook, in the chapter on principles of successful living, one of my favorite chapters. So God's will for us is always greater peace, greater love, greater joy, and does not harm anyone else. So to say this must be God's will for me, if it is not loving, joyful, or peaceful, it's not. It's not. We're just making that up. So if I stay, well, here's what I believe, and this is what I've come to learn from my practice of the science of mind, that if I stay on the road long enough, I will experience the results I seek. If I keep doing what I need to do, putting one foot in front of the other, 
actually putting one prayer in front of the other, one meditation in front of the other, one affirmation in front of the other, I know it will happen. How do I know? Because I have seen it. I have a history of this stuff working. Now, I remember hearing people say again and again, time heals. Have you heard that? Time heals? No, it doesn't. Time does not heal. Time just marches on. It will march right over you. And you know what? I have just totally goofed up this whole thing this morning. And before I come back to how time does not heal, what heals is consciousness, and we have to cultivate consciousness in order for time to heal. Now, hold that thought, okay? Because now, now, I was so excited about sharing the message, I forgot we have guests who are going to share. So this is just the kind of guy I am. I'm just rolling with it. So this morning, from our congregation, I'm just so embarrassed, you know? There's just no graceful way out of this. If I could disappear, I would. But you know, I'm just like, oh my god, if I could just get So anyway, um, I think, is this the microphone they're going to use? Yes, it is. So hold on, hold on. Don't everybody, um, hold on. You know, there's so much happening in here. Let's see. No, that's not it. This is it. Okay. Hold on, hold on. We're good, right? This is good now? I'm sorry. Um, would you welcome with me now from our congregation, Allegra and Sean and Akai, who will share with us this morning. Thank you. Do you want to hold this? I'm sorry. I'm yeah, such an idiot. Okay. That could be better. Okay. I would prefer it that way. Great. You won't be there. Okay. <laughs> First of all, I just have to say that I could easily talk for 20 minutes about the profound and overarching way NHCRS has impacted our lives. The fellowship, the spiritual growth, the fun. I mean, where else can you light a menorah and sing Santa Claus is Coming to Town? Right. <laughs> but I need to stay on topic. In December 2014, we found NHCRS completely by accident. However, from the moment we walked in the sanctuary and saw the diverse spectrum of artwork on the walls, particularly the one, the painting with Buddha and Einstein having pizza, you know, we, we knew that this place was different. <laughs> we had come to see a friend perform music but when Dr. Mark started his sermon, Sean and I started giving each other the, are you hearing what I'm hearing? Look. Because although we'd been searching for a spiritual home, we didn't expect to find it that day. We were so sure this place for, was for us, we became members immediately. We did the quick start class. We hosted a gourmet for gods. We volunteered at youth church. She was about this size at that time. And then fall came, and we saw the journey of the heart presentation. At that point, we had been giving regularly, but not thoughtfully, just whatever cash was in our wallet. And after that, we talked about giving regularly and purposefully. We didn't do the full 10% right away because that seemed scary. So we started that with something that felt doable, but also noticeable, 3% of our income, an amount that would pinch a little bit. However, the year came and went, and we didn't feel a pinch. In fact, we didn't even notice. So the next year, we did 5%, and I thought for sure this is going to hurt, right? Like putting the check into the envelope. Ugh. But nine months passed, and nothing. Around this time, Dr. Mark recommended a book called The Four Spiritual Laws of Prosperity by Unity Minister Edwin Gaines. And for some reason, the title just resonated with me. So I listened to the audiobook, and if you've ever heard Minister Gaines speak, you know she has a southern accent. And one day she said something that just stopped me in my tracks. She said, tithing is like writing a thank you note to God. <laughs> and I guess it just spoke to me because I'm a compulsive thank you note writer. In fact, I wrote all of our wedding thank you notes during our honeymoon. <laughs> I know, I'm, I'm a lot of fun. <laughs> but 
But I guess that line resonated with me because I have a lot to be thankful for. I have my family, my health, our church, our friends. I have work that is meaningful to me. And I was lucky enough to be born a woman of color in Los Angeles, California. My goodness, if that doesn't <laughs> give God the right to 10% of all my money, I don't know what does. Anyway, Minister Gain also preaches that tithing is faith, that God is your source and not your job or your business. So we decided to tithe, which meant we were going to start giving twice what we've been giving. But I wasn't even concerned about it pinching because I was prepared to write a really nice thank you note to God. We began immediately. In fact, we tithed a bit more because Minister Gaines recommends tithing above 10% in order to pay off debt. So I added an extra $25 on top of our tithe. Literally two months after we started doing this, I received an unexpected contract that allowed us to pay off 40% of our debt. The more we gave, the more we got. And we've regularly had unexpected demonstrations of abundance over the last two plus years from lots of different sources proving that Sean's job and my business are not our source. In fact, we've outgiven our pledge by 27% last year and 50% this year, and we've paid off all of our debt. <laughs> I'll finish with this. Think about how much you have to be grateful for and write God a big, fat thank you note in the form of a check to our church. <laughs> You'll be glad you did. I'd like to just say that what she said, and I wrote the speech, by the way. <laughs> I tithed, but I started when I was eight. And some of you, or maybe most of you, may think I should have tithed when I was younger, but my mom and dad didn't give me allowance when I was younger. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Akai, I am so impressed. She started tithing when she was eight. Watch out. Where was I? Oh, yeah. Uh, let's see. Fate, destiny, kismet, people say God's will for us is always something greater. You remember that part? If I stay on the road long enough, I will experience the results I seek. I know what will happen because I've proved it in my life. Thank you again and again. We left off with Time Heals. No, it doesn't. Remember, there was a song in a, in a show called Mac and Mabel called Time Heals Everything. It's a really sweet song. It's not true at all. Uh, because time does not heal. We've all, how many times have we had some situation and we thought, well, I'll just wait and see. And we waited and didn't see. We didn't see anything. So time does not heal what consciousness does not cultivate. Right? So yes, absolutely we can have healing, but we have to cultivate, I believe, that healing. You know, it's um, part of how, how I cultivate consciousness, you know, is what I choose to, to do as far as my spiritual practice. Um, but it's not just my spiritual practice. It's how I interact with people. It's how I am in the world. It's how I think about things when I'm hitting automatic pay on the computer. It's, it's, it's all of that. You know, we talk a lot about how uh, we start things when we plant a seed, you know? But, and I know that when we plant a seed, everybody's always thinking about the harvest. I know that's true about me. I certainly am. But you know, there is that period in the middle between where you plant the seed and you have the harvest, and it's cultivation. And there's a lot of cultivation that has to happen. And, and if you're like me, I just, I just want the harvest right now. I put the seed in the ground. Where are the watermelons? They should be here. You know, cultivating takes time. It's not necessarily an exciting thing. It's not particularly glamorous. But what do I know is what I ask myself. What do I know here? I know spiritual truth. I know that if I take positive action, I know if I have a good attitude, I know that life seems to work better for me. Things just seem to open up. See, my eyes say again and again, gee, you're not really making progress here. You're moving too slowly with things. Um, but you know, if, if we consider someone like a stonemason, you know a guy who's, got, who's working with granite, maybe he's a sculptor or something like that, and, and he hammer, has a hammer and a chisel, 
and there's this granite or marble, and he hits it and hits it and hits it and hits it, and eventually a piece breaks off, right? So did the first hit on the chisel do anything, or was it the 25th hit on the chisel that did it? I think it's all of it together, you know? Um, because all of those early hits on the hammer prepared the way for that final one where the chip comes off. So all together, the accumulation of effort did it. So consistent effort will create movement in our life. This is what I want people to know. That yeah, it, the time again, time is actually on our side. I have to stay in the process long enough to give it the chance to win. So people will say to me, oh, you know, Dr. Mark, I tried treating. It didn't work for me. Really? Okay, wow, that's really interesting. Or they said, well, you know, meditation is just not for me, or I did some affirmations, they just didn't work. You know, so often I find with people that, you know, they give up just before the miracle, just before the demonstration. And, and I understand because I am an impatient person. Oh, I don't want to say that into the universe. Cancel, cancel. I'm not. I, yeah. But I want to know how long? I want to know how long is this going to take? When will we be there? You know, but we can't predict. Now, experts say that it can take between three and five years to get any area of your life, any area, completely back on track. Wow. So in three to five years, my health could be completely different than it is now. In three to five years, my finances could be completely different than they are right now. In three to five years, my interpersonal relationship could be completely different. In three to five years, I could have a completely different career. I have no interest in that, by the way. But, you know, it, it seems like only yesterday. You know, we all start with something, right? Everybody has a little bit of faith. Everybody has some hope. Everybody has some expectancy, some level of health. We have some level of supply. So you start with what you have. I hold that we know what we need to do. Really, God does not keep it a mystery. Everybody knows what they need to do. Let's just tell the truth about that. We know what we need to do. God does not withhold the information. And if I tell the truth even a little more, we know what we need to do, and I just don't want to do it. Yeah, that's the bottom line. I just don't want to do it. You say, oh, God, you know, show me what to do, show me what to do, show me what to do, God. And God says, Mark, do this. And I say, oh, no, you must mean that for somebody else. That's not for me. So I'll give you a little example. So I had, um, it is not... Uh, be a surprise to anybody that I have struggled with my weight for years. It has just been uh, an issue for me. And so one day I was meditating and I said, God, what do I need to do about this? What do I need to do about my weight? And I heard very clearly in a voice that was not unlike my own that said, stop eating at 6.30 at night. And it's like, oh no, I don't want to do that. No, really I don't. I love to eat at night. You know, when I'm watching TV or working on a class or I'm reading a book, you know, a little read, a little nosh, a little more read, a little nosh, a little watch, a little nosh, a little watch, a little nosh. It was not a mystery why I was in the condition I was in. So a ways back, I stopped eating at 6.30 at night. And I'm going to tell you, this was not easy. This was very difficult because the truth was I consumed most of my food after 6.30 at night. Um, but you know, I started to see a change, and it was good, and I felt good about the change. And so you know it's, this, I started with what was, you know, and it takes a bit each day. And you know, if, at first I did not really notice any change, but over a period of time, I really had. You know, every day I think, in every moment, we get to exercise choice or choices that determine if we will be um, a greater version of ourself or a not so good version of ourself. No, I know we're coming to a science of mind church. We all want to be a greater version of ourself, but greatness is not predetermined. Uh, it's not destined. It's not carved in rock by forces beyond our control. Greatness, I think, is always in the moment of a decision, you know? I'm gonna make a decision here. One of these decisions will support a greater expression of life, a greater expression of love, a greater expression of health, or it will not. So let's go back 
to the beginning of COVID. If I only knew how long we were going to be out of circulation, I would have made some different choices, honestly. Because you know what I have seen is I have a bicycle in my garage that has gathered an enormous amount of dust. And I was just thinking the other day, I was thinking, I looked at the bike, and I was like, God, I wish I'd start, if I'd known I was gonna have this time, if I started riding the bike during COVID, and I just went for a few miles every day, I was like, oh my God, I'm so embarrassed. I'd have bicycled thousands of miles, thousands of miles. Now that's the same thing with spiritual practice. You know, sometimes when I'm out walking, I will work with a particular affirmation, and I'll say, all right, I'm gonna say this affirmation, I'm gonna say it for the next four or five blocks. You know, so I know where the light's coming down the street there, so I'm going to just keep working with this affirmation. I'll just keep saying it and saying it and saying it. Now, at the end of five blocks, I do not see the physical demonstration of the affirmation I have been making, but what I do know, what I do have within me is that I have had a realization from staying with the affirmation that some awareness, there's been a little aha in my thinking, in my consciousness, and so I know that has done some good. People like to say, uh, someday I'll have the money, or the other culprit is time. You know, time and money. Uh, someday doesn't exist. We only, only have today. So here's the thought. What if my ship isn't coming in? <gasps> That's a horrible thought, isn't it? No, but no, it's not coming in because it's already here. What if it's already here? And we have everything, everything. We have the money, the time, the abilities, all we need to achieve all that we want, but we just can't see all of it right now. Right, so there was a fellow named uh, William Wilberfor, Wilberfor, and he spent year after year introducing bills into the British Parliament to end slavery. And he was defeated every single year from 1788 to 1806. Every year he'd put the bill up and every year he'd get shot down. Finally, finally, three days before his death in Parliament, it passed, right? Now, this bill to abolish slavery in England and all uh, of its colonies, right? Three, dec uh, three decades later, a similar bill would be passed in the United States, right? Spearheaded by Abraham Lincoln, you know, the Emancipation Proclamation. Now, in Abraham Lincoln, to me, is such an interesting character because personally, he did not have an easy road. He struggled with depression. He seemed like he had failed at lots of things before coming to the presidency. Um, family problems, you know, he had a son that he just adored, and that son died very young. So he was no stranger to disappointment and loss and ridicule and all of that, right? But he was able to do, in spite of all that that was being heaped on him, he was able to accomplish something extraordinary. So you think the idea of like, oh, well, there'll be this big breakthrough. You know, it's, it's like people who are waiting for the lottery. You know, it sounds great, but I gotta say, have you bought a ticket? Right, you have, your chances go way up if you actually buy a ticket. You know, but, but hoping to win the lottery and even buying a ticket is not really a strategy for success. If anyone waits for the big break, if everyone waited for the big break, you know, for that thing, what would the world look like? Nobody, nobody would be expressed at all. For most people, this is, this is it. This is the piece you came to hear today. For most people, it is small acts done over and over and over that make the difference in our consciousness. Just small things done over and over and over. You know, there's... Um, what do I want to say? Life... I was thinking about this because of, of my own situation. I thought, you know, there are so many people in America right now who are experiencing some kind of a health crisis. And I thought, how did that happen? Here we are. We're the richest country in the world. We have so much available to us. How did it happen that so many people in America are in bad physical health? Hmm. And if I look at myself and I see how I have experienced things, I know that it's little decisions that we make daily again and again. Those decisions are compounded over time. So some years back, I taught an abundance workshop with a book uh, called The Millionaire Next Door. Uh, that book came out a long, long time ago. Um, and you know, uh, the book, I remember the book was, was a, big, uh, a big hit. Uh, and the thing was, uh, you know, I was, I was looking for that 
the millionaire next door. What's the exciting secret that I've been missing all this time? I know there's a secret in there. Well, and the secret was, as you would probably figure from today's talk, <sighs> little mundane, ordinary things done over and over with our money again and again and again will create that consciousness. You know, if we repeat these disciplines over and over, you know, the, the gap that separates people who really feel successful and people who don't is slow, so, so slight that most people don't see it. They think it's something really big. Oh, they were born into a great family with lots of money. Oh, they had a trust fund. Oh, something like that. So we used to think the sun revolved around the earth, right? Today we know the earth revolves around the sun, but up until Copernicus, Galileo, those kinds of people, people, you know, you were in trouble if you disagreed with that. In life, we never stay in the same place. You know, people, but, and, and I often hear people say to me, but you know, life, it's just not fair. Life is not fair. No, it's not. Life is not fair. Science of mind does not teach that life is fair. The science of mind teaches that life is reciprocal, right? So what we're putting out is what comes back. One of my favorite sayings of the Buddha was the mistake you make is you think you have time. I have that on a, on a card above my desk at home, and I look at that, and I think about that every day. And what that does is that kind of gives me a little kick in the behind to do the next thing I know I need to do, so I don't put it off. The mistake you make is you think you have time. Uh, there was a guy, his name was John Burroughs, and he said, a man can fail many times, but isn't a failure until he blames someone else. <sighs> wow, I thought that was really good. I thought that was really good. See, because what happens is if people feel like they're a failure, the natural tendency is to want to blame, to, to put it outside of ourselves, you know? But people who are successes always take responsibility. You know, I'm at cause in my life. They, saying this will empower you to know that you are at cause. You know, yes, I understand negative stuff happens to everybody. And in science of mind, it's not about reacting. In science of mind, we're training ourselves to respond, to take that moment, to take a breath and say, okay, what needs to happen here? What do I really need to do? What's the consciousness I want to embody? See, because if I have that consciousness, then what takes place out here will be a reflection of that consciousness. So it's always that principle of as within, so without. So I think we can accomplish pretty much anything we really, really set our minds to if we would give it some of our good spiritual attention every day. Not a lot of effort, just a little bit every day. And as we heard from our sharers, over time, we will see that that can only benefit us. Let's pray. So we turn our attention inward now for just a moment to remember that right here, the place whereon we stand is holy ground. We are surrounded and filled with God's infinite spirit, a spirit of love and goodwill and givingness and peace. I know that God within each and every one of us is the most true, real thing about us. We are the sons and daughters of the Most High God. And so in this awareness of our connection with God, I further know that we are all connected with each other on the unseen side of life. And I claim for each and every one of us that our fate, our destiny is wide open, that it's just waiting for us to participate in creating it. And I know we do this through our daily dedicated spiritual practice, through a loving energy that emanates from our heart out into the world, through thinking in a high-minded, affirmative way. I know we are blessed by all of this and that the good of God is available to each and every one of us right here, right now. So we include in our prayer today our family members and friends, parents, children, all of those we love and hold near and dear. And we know that right where they are, the fullness, the allness of God's infinite spirit is right there. So there is health, there is wholeness, there is supply, there is love, there is all needs met. We let our prayer be a blessing in the world. So whatever it is that pulls at our attention, we say, God is bigger than all of that. God is present in all of it. That it's all the activity of the one seeking to know itself in a greater way. We bless our church. We bless all churches everywhere. Synagogues, temples, mosques, ashrams, all paths. And we are certainly blessed by being together today. The collective consciousness of all of us lifts all of us up. And so with an open, gracious, full heart, I say thank you, God, that this is the truth. I release this word 
into God's perfect law, and so it is. Together we all say, Amen. All right, we'll sing one time. I am so blessed. I am so blessed. I am so grateful for all that I have. I am so blessed. I am so blessed. I am so grateful. I am so blessed. All right, I invite you to hold your gift over your heart and we'll say our statement of giving together. From the love of pure spirit within me, I bless this gift. I send it forth to heal and bless and prosper. It is evidence of my faith and belief. It does good work in the world and returns to me multiplied abundantly. Thank you very much.
this is enough. Chambara. Thank you, Gia. Woo! You can get Gia's music on iTunes. Thank you so much. And let's, let's give some love and appreciation to our musicians, Sam and Karen. Okay, uh, so now I have some announcements for us. And you can make donations. You can call the office at 818 7627566 or you can go to nhcrs.org forward slash give and text the word give give g i v e to 8184573419 you can also shop amazon smile and select our church you'll find us under church of religious science north hollywood as the charity of your choice i do that and I shop on Amazon a lot. This benefits the church at no cost to you. You can have prayer with a practitioner after the service, in person, and on Zoom. Uh, so if you're on Facebook Live, you want to get onto Zoom to get prayer with a practitioner that way. Uh, you can also email your prayer request to prayer at nhcrs.org or put a request in the prayer box. You can call into the prayer request line uh, at our church, and the option is number four. Lots of ways to get prayer. It's great. We have a Wednesday evening Taze service that coming up. That's November 3rd. The meditation starts at 6.50 p.m., and the service is at 7 p.m. Join us this week for Taze service. The evening will begin with a sound meditation, followed by practitioner Joanne O'Brien, joined by Reverend Sidney, facilitating an hour of sacred chanting, readings, and meditation. Your youth church is open on Sundays. We welcome youth of all ages for our 945 service. We are currently meeting outside on the church lawn. And we have a Christmas tree event going on again this year. It's wonderful. Help make a child's Christmas a joyful one. Once again, we have adopted the children at North Valley Caring Services. Practitioner Gail Pilat is on the patio today to distribute names and gift ideas or find her contact information on our website. Deliver all gifts unwrapped to the church with an appropriate size gift bag by November 28th. The gift distribution will be on December 9th. You, Food and God, part two, workshop with Reverend Nadine. That will be Saturday, November 13th from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. in person or on Zoom and all are welcome. Join Reverend Nadine and world-renowned transformational coach Tara Packer for this incredible workshop. Tara works somatically, that means mind and body, and utilizes a variety of techniques including EFT, which is tapping, to initiate a quicker process with emotional detoxing. Prior to the workshop, please read the book, Women, Food, and God, and keep a daily food journal. The cost for this is $30. Our bookstore is open for 30 minutes after service every Sunday. Please stop by. We have a Zoom virtual patio before and after and uh, Sunday and Wednesday services. And a Zoom meditation is happening every morning every morning, Monday through Saturday at 8 a.m. Visit our website, nhcrs.org, to obtain Zoom links and more information about all our events and to sign up for weekly e-blasts and monthly letters. And I think that's it for the announcements. So please rise and join me as we sing the peace song. <laughs>
So please repeat after me. I'm at home in the heart of God. I'm at home in the heart of God. My life is anchored in truth. My life is anchored in truth. I can never be separate. <laughs> Never be separate. I live in the consciousness of peace. I live in the consciousness of peace. I release all fear. I release all fear. I am living love. I am living love. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Okie dokie. Thank you.